and the Wreckers. Fill up everyone's glasses, landlord, cried Captain Bagosh. The drinks are on me today. There was an astonished silence. The scene was the buccaneer's arms, where it was well known that the captain was far too mean to stand a drink to anybody. Me neither. Me neither. He must have gone by me. But today was different. You see, went on the captain, I am for once working for His Majesty's government. Tonight, the good ship Black Pig sets forth to the Indies with the greatest load of silver bullion ever to leave these shores. And why? Because the Navy ship contracted to do the job has been delayed, and the silver is needed urgently to pay our gallant soldiers. We sail tonight on the eight o'clock tide, me heart is. Let us drink to a successful voyage. Unseen in the snug bar next door, Cutthroat Jake, the captain's worst enemy, held out his tankard for a filling of free rum and chuckled. Ho, oh, ho, ho! Successful voyage indeed, he growled to his mates. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho! You'll get no further than the Barnacle Reef if I have anything to do with it. Gather round, lads, and listen to me plan. We have no time to lose, no time even to return to the Flying Dustman. Now the Barnacle Reef lay at the mouth of the harbour. Many a ship had been wrecked on its dreaded razor-sharp rocks. So many that a great lighthouse had been built on the reef to warn vessels at night to steer clear. And so it happened that the keeper of the lighthouse was none other than Tom the cabin boy's Uncle Joe. In fact, as Pugwash and his crew returned to their ship, and Jake and his men sneaked away to their longboat, Tom had gone to take tea with his Uncle Joe in the living room of the lighthouse. They were old friends, and it was a chance for Tom to say goodbye to his uncle before setting out with Captain Pugwash on the journey to the Indies. And now, Tom, said Uncle Joe, before you go, I'll take you upstairs and show you the lighthouse lamp. So Tom followed his uncle, and when they got upstairs, he was shown the huge light which had saved so many ships from wrecking on the Barnacle Reef. How does it work, Uncle Joe? Well, usually, said his uncle, I light the lamp by hand when dusk comes down. But if for any reason I have to be away until later, I've worked out a timing device. I have this candle which will last for one, two or three hours. When the candle burns down, it sets fire to this short length of fuse, which, in turn, lights the wick of the lamp at any time I want it. Yeah, eh? Suddenly, Joe broke off. That's funny, he said. I thought I heard voices downstairs. It sounds as though we have visitors. Wait now, while I go down and see. And Joe climbed down the ladder from the lamp room to the living room straight into the clutches of cutthroat Jake and his desperate band, who had just arrived in their longboat. In a moment, they had him tied up and lashed to his own chair. Now, Mr. Lighthouse Keeper, growled Jake, stay quiet and you'll come to no harm. But there's some that will, ho, ho, ho. For when dusk comes down tonight, there'll be no guiding light on the Barnacle Reef, cause you'll not be able to move to light it. There'll be a false light lit by a friend of mine further out to sea. And that means that any ship, and there's one very special ship, ha ha ha, that sails from the port tonight, will smash on the rocks as sure as eggs is eggs. Now, that ship belongs to that old ruffian Pugwash, and it has a very special cargo aboard, a cargo of silver bullion. And guess who'll be waiting on the rocks to grab it and put pay to the ship's worthless crew? Why, yours untruly, of course. Come on, me handsomes, let's finish off the tea. We'll need our bellies full for the dirty work ahead. 
and the ruffians were so busy gobbling down what remained of the crumpets and cakes that they never noticed Tom's signal to his uncle from the hatch above, nor Tom's escape down a rope outside the lighthouse. And they heard nothing as he rowed himself quietly back towards the harbour. Meanwhile, on board the Black Pig, Captain Pugwash was trying to get his ship underway to catch the evening tide. Cluster off! he cried. Hoist the sails! Make for the open sea! But I can't remember how to untie the knots, complained Willie. I'm in a bit of a tangle myself, grunted Barnabas. Fact is, we'll not get nowhere without Tom, said the mate. Which was true. Tom was the only one who knew how to work the ship. Weeping walruses, cried the captain angrily. Where is the wretched boy? But Tom hadn't gone straight back to the black pig from the lighthouse. For one thing, he wanted to see where Jake had moored his ship in the harbour. The sun was setting behind the barnacle reef when at last he brought the dinghy back to his own vessel. Ahoy there, black pig! Tom, thank heavens you... I mean, where on earth have you been? The captain corrected himself angrily. We can't wait all night, you know. Sorry, Captain, said Tom. Something's turned up and we're going to have to alter our plans a bit. And because he knew he couldn't sail without Tom, the captain had to listen. An hour later, darkness had fallen. But no warning light shone from the lighthouse on the treacherous barnacle reef. Instead, a false light beamed from a point further out to sea. Among the jagged rocks, Cutthroat Jake and his bloodthirsty crew watched and waited and waited and scanned the murky moonlit sea with greedy eyes. Tide's fallen fast. They must come soon. But I still can't see anything. Wait. Maybe there is something. Then, from the direction of the harbour, a faint shape could be seen approaching through the gloom. At first, it was no more than a shadow. Then, at last... It's a ship! It must be the Black Pig! Sure enough, a large vessel was coming into sight. As Jake and his crew crouched excitedly among the rocks, they could hear the creaking of the rigging and the swirl of the waves round the bows. At any moment now, she'll strike the reef breathed Jake. Stand by with your cutlasses, me beauties. Then suddenly, with a flicker and a flash, the lamp of the barnacle lighthouse burst the light above them, and in the sudden blaze, the horrified ruffian saw... Captain Jake, look! The bows of the approaching vessel rise and fall on the waves, then strike on the rocks with a fearful rending crash. they saw on the prow was not Black Pig. That's not Pugwash's ship. It's ours. It's the Flying Dustman. For it was Cutthroat Jake's own ship that had struck the Barnacle Reef. And for Jake, even worse was to follow. From the bows of his doomed ship leapt a score of red-coated militiamen, with Tom the cabin boy pointing the way and Captain Pugwash and his crew keeping well out of harm's way at the back. Dazzled by the sudden glare, bewildered by the unexpected turn of events, Jake and his crew put up very little resistance. Very soon they were rounded up and marched away into the lighthouse, where Tom's Uncle Joe was released. Are you all right, Uncle? I'm fine, Tom lad. And Jake and his men were put in irons. Dashed grateful to you, Captain, for leading us to these desperate criminals, said the officer in charge. Uh, think nothing of it. Uh, glad to be of service, especially if there's a reward attached, replied Captain Pugwash, slightly out of breath. And he boasted all the way, of course, as Tom and his uncle rowed him and the crew back to the harbour, leaving the militia in charge of the lighthouse and the prisoners, and the flying dustman firmly stuck on the rocks. Smart work, Tom, whispered Uncle Joe. I know it was you who fixed it all. But it beats me how you did it. Easy, Uncle, said Tom. 
When Jake and his crew grabbed you, I first set the lamp to light at about eight this evening, in the way you showed me. Then I escaped down the outside of the lighthouse. But why didn't your captain sail out on the evening tide? interrupted Joe. How was it that it was Jake's ship that went on the rocks? Well, said Tom in a lowered voice, the crew of the Black Pig really aren't much good at getting the ship going without me. So all I had to do was to find out where Jake's ship was moored, tell the captain to alert the soldiers, and then we all got on board the Flying Dustman, cast her loose on the falling tide, and sailed her onto the Barnacle Reef. This calls for celebration, cried Captain Pugwash, as they landed from the longboat and made for the buccaneer's arms. And so, for the second time that day, there were free drinks all round at the captain's expense. Oh, you should have seen me as I rushed into action. Oh, good fellow. <laughs> oh, here's a good fellow, the captain. Go on, let's buy him a drink. He even ordered a lemonade for Tom the cabin boy and told everybody how brave he, Captain Pugwash, had been in leading the militia in their attack on the wreckers of Barnacle Reef. So, a merry evening was had by all. And it was not until the following day that the Black Pig at last set out on the captain's voyage to the Indies. Cutthroat Jake and his men were safely in the town jail, awaiting trial for attempted wrecking. And, as there was indeed a reward for Jake's capture, Pugwash was even better off than he'd been before. Bye-bye, Tom! shouted Uncle Joe from the top of the Barnacle Lighthouse. Have a good journey! You ought to be all right! with a skillful captain like yours. Smart fellow, your uncle, said Captain Pugwash, as he steered the ship well clear of the reef. Knows a good man when he sees one, eh? But even at that distance, Tom could see that his uncle was winking. And he waved and smiled and said nothing. <laughs>